Are you tired of your drawers looking like this and washing dishes for ages? Then you need One Pot Meals, the world's favorite way to cook their meals. Before now, you needed lots of pans, which was confusing. Now, everything goes in one pot and you can enjoy cooking again. Make succulent recipes like these five dishes from all around the world. For this one pot meal episode, I am going to cook all the dishes in this one pot. <laughs> to be honest, I usually use it just for soup, so I'm excited to see what other things I can do with it. And speaking of soup, I actually have some soup to make over at my farm on Heyday, who's the sponsor for today's episode. <laughs> if you're wondering what Heyday is, it is an online farming game where you run and manage a farm, but it's not just about animal husbandry. You are also producing and making food, creating shipments, interacting with people. I'm gonna show you some of my farm. Obviously my berry patch because it's so aesthetic with the little picket fences. And look at this box just enjoying it as much as I enjoy it over there. It's one of my favorite games to play because I find the graphics and the customization of it really fun. There's Aisha. Aisha, where are you going, girl? Oh, she's just sniffing, running around the farm. There's Percy, that's Leia's cat. <laughs> it's my boy. The act of harvesting all of the vegetables, I find to be very relaxing. Okay, look, how satisfying is this? Look at those pumpkins. And it's a really good way to pass the time when I'm in my kitchen cooking lots of foods from around the world that take their sweet time. <laughs> Heyday is always doing holiday and seasonal themed events around the farm. And this Easter, they are running a chocolate bunny themed event. Players will get their complimentary building that they can use to create Easter eggs. And they sell those eggs through the boat that will give them tons of chocolate bunnies. That is also raising money for Fauna and Flora. Fauna and Flora is an organization that champions sustainable farming, conserving of natural habitats, and safeguarding wildlife. They've partnered with 48 countries, and Heyday is partnering with them to donate $50,000 during their Easter event. You can join this community event and play Heyday by downloading the game from the link in my bio or using the QR code. When you reach level 17, you'll receive your complimentary egg maker and you can make chocolate bunnies there that'll help Heyday reach their goal of 50,000 bunnies to donate the $50,000 to Fauna and Flora. My link will also give you a free Easter planter and 15,000 coins, which honestly are great for the game. You can buy tons of fun stuff with them. It's a great initiative in a fun game and I hope I will see you down on the farm. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Amra. I live in Sydney, Australia. I am originally from Bosnia and Herzegovina, a tiny, tiny country on the continent of Europe. The dish that I want to talk to you all about today is called Trzeni Kupus Sako Bastama, which translated to English means roasted cabbage with sausages. Trzeni Kupus Sako Bastama is a very simple peasant style dish with only a handful of ingredients. It's cooked in just one pot. This is a smoked cured beef. I've never had anything like this. What? It's got like a, well, it's got like a really smoky flavor. Huh. That's interesting. I bet this will be so good with the pickled cabbage. Everything's gonna be good with pickled cabbage though. You get a very tasty meal at the end of the day with very little effort. For me, I would say that a variation of this dish is quite common across most Eastern Europe and the Balkans. It's like meat spaghetti. I think the Bosnian version is simplest and that's because one, we're not a very rich country and two, we have very harsh winters. For me, this dish is symbolic of cold weather and my family. When I was buying this for the episode and I saw they only had this ginormous jar, I was not upset because pickled cabbage leaves are one of my favorite foods. These are so crunchy and have such a good sour flavor. I've never cooked a dish like this, and I feel like it's just gonna be another way for me to eat one of my favorite foods, which is cabbage, in pickled form, which is my favorite on top of favorite, double favorite. <laughs> Mainly my mom, she would make it for us in winter because being cooked in the oven, it would warm up the house as it cooks. If you really wanted to make it super decadent, you would serve it with mashed potato on the side. My preference is with just some crusty bread that you dip into the cabbage juiciness at the bottom of the pan. 
This is a Balkan seasoning that I found at a Balkan grocery store here. And it says to use it to taste, but like, I don't even know what this tastes like. Oh my God, that's so salty. This tastes like chicken bouillon powder, kind of. Ooh, it is salty. Okay, so not that much. <laughs> oh God, licking raw spices of a mood, okay. One pot wonders, as we like to call them at our house, make midweek meals a breeze. As someone who enjoys cooking but doesn't enjoy washing up after a long day at work, it's meals like this that you know are simple, where you get a maximum taste with minimal effort that I love. Okay. Ugh. <laughs> I'm not excited. I would love for people to try Perzenico Pusako Basitsama because it's easy, it's cheap, and above all, it's tasty. It will give you a experience of being in Bosnia in winter without the cold and the travel. I think this is the first Bosnian dish on the channel, which I'm very, very excited by, also because it's all of my favorite types of foods in one bowl. Thing. Look at that sausage. Tell me that sausage wasn't raised by a loving family. Oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> Let's eat this the real way though. Snaps for the dish. Snaps for the dish, yum. It's got like, the smoky, smoky flavor of that sausage, which is, I love it. And then the bitey feistiness that is baked sauerkraut. And if you've never had baked sauerkraut, it really brings out like the inner flavor of the brine and it's absolutely delicious. The smoked beef is something I've never tried before. I found it at a halal butcher. It's definitely a really different flavor. When I tried it while I was cooking it, I wasn't sure like, I don't think I would have eaten it on its own, but in this, it almost kind of feels like when you cook with porchetta and it adds that little level of smokiness to everything. It's great. Excuse me. I think that sausage sent somebody over here. I know, honey. <laughs> I'll just give her a little bite. Hold on. She didn't even chew it. <laughs> What's with dogs? Dogs are bizarre. She just like swallowed that whole, like enjoy it a little bit. If you're interested in trying something like this, I think that there are a lot of ways that you can make this dish with ingredients that might be more readily available. Like you could use sauerkraut. You don't have to chop up the whole cabbage leaves. I think that that would still totally work. As far as seasoning, the one that I got really did have a kind of chicken bouillon flavor, but I think any all-purpose seasoning would work. You're just looking for flavor. And for sausages, I think that the smoked sausage is important. And you definitely want something that's, I think could already be cooked, so not a raw sausage in there, but like the type is kind of up for you. But if you can find yourself a Balkan or a Polish market, you can definitely find a sausage like this. You can find a sausage like this for yourself. <laughs> I really do love sausages though. I saw versions of this dish that were served with mashed potatoes, which would make it probably not a one pot meal, but if you put me in a room with this and mashed potatoes, <laughs> I would be so happy. I just think we all need to be eating more cabbage and we definitely need to be eating more pickled cabbage and baking it like this has changed my life. Fabulous. Hello. My name is Haley and I'm from Wisconsin in the United States. The one pot meal that I'd like to share with you today is homemade hamburger helper. Now, if you're from the United States, you've probably heard of hamburger helper. You can find it at just about any grocery store here. However, if you're not familiar with it, the original version is a pre-made meal kit. So it comes with a pasta and then a powdered sauce packet. You do have to provide your own pound of ground beef. It all gets mixed together in a pot. It's a cheap and simple, easy meal that people can make. Oh, cheese mountain. 
Hamburger Helper is incredibly culturally significant in the United States. It's been around since it was released in 1971 by General Mills. It was released in response to rising meat costs and people just needing to spread their resources a little bit thinner. So it allowed families to feed their entire family for a much lower cost while also getting women in and out of the kitchen faster because as they were entering the workforce, they had less and less time to actually spend on cooking their family meals. I refer to it as kind of a mix between mac and cheese and spaghetti. The recipe wants a teaspoon of seasoned salt and I have this chicken salt from the french fry episode that I did like two years ago. I've used it, but like it's a lot of seasoned salt. So going in, I think this will work well. You've got the cheesiness from the sharp cheddar, but then you have some of the spices that you're gonna traditionally find in a spaghetti sauce, like oregano and basil. It is a very interesting combination of flavors. That's a very satisfying sound. ASMR artists should do like hamburger helper videos. <laughs> I personally prefer the homemade version. It is a little more expensive to make it homemade. Most of that cost comes from buying a good quality cheese. If you are going to make this homemade from scratch, I do recommend getting a block of cheese and shredding it yourself. Oh my God, I'm like pumped. This looks so good. It's like a mac and cheese, but better. Mm. Okay, meat going in. Oh my God, it looks so good on camera. <sighs> One pot meals for me are something that are a staple. Okay, I mean, tell me you don't want to have dinner tonight here. I work 12 hour night shifts, so I don't really have a whole lot of time to prep and cook and clean in the kitchen. So if I can get in, get out, and still have a homemade good meal to get me through the rest of the week, that's a win in my book. When I think about one pot meals here in America, I definitely think about Hamburger Helper. Like it is quintessential one pot meal. They cornered that market with their marketing campaigns. And so when Haley sent me this as a DIY version, I really liked it because it feels like American culture elevated. <laughs> I did add some of my homemade chili crisp on this to give it a little bit of zing. This is like the best thing ever. There's, there's nothing not to love about this. Ooh, it's also really flavorful. I used ground turkey instead of ground beef. Um, and turkeys can be a little bit bland, but I actually think this whole dish has tons of flavor. All those spices that you put in, they go a long way. So does the chili crisp, obviously. Mm. Also shells. I haven't had shell pasta in forever. Every pasta dish I've done on this channel has been truly every other type of pasta shape except for shells. There is just something so comforting about pasta and cheese and like a thick creamy sauce. Haley's right that it's kind of mac and cheese adjacent, but it doesn't, it's not cheesy in the same way mac and cheese is cheesy. You're not like getting strings of it. The recipe that Haley sent me, I feel like is definitely for four people. Even though it's a half a box of pasta, there's so much other stuff going in here that it really bulks it out. That was not half. I think that's half. And like, it's very affordable to make. And I think this will freeze really well to have as meals for when I don't feel like cooking. I don't know, I'm just really happy right now. I never had Hamburger Helper as a kid. And so I think doing this was a little bit of like a fun moment for me to finally get to experience it. I'm done. This is just, I don't have anything else to say. I'm just gonna keep eating here. Hi, my name is Kamona, but you can call me Mona. I am Jamaican and I live in Jamaica. The dish I want to talk about is fish tea. In Jamaica we speak Patwa and English and fish tea is the same in both languages. Fish tea is a very hearty soup. It has a lot of elements, lots of protein, lots of carbohydrates, lots of vegetables and of course lots of pepper or at least that's how I like it. Fish tea is essentially a very hearty soup. It has a broth-like consistency 
can see most of the soups in Jamaica are a little on the thicker side fish tea is supposed to be a little bit thinner but has a lot of elements I've never washed like a whole fish before <laughs> I think I've washed it I mean the fish was already pretty clean I like fish tea because it is something from my childhood. So in America, when you're sick, chicken noodle soup is the go-to for me. And in the part of Jamaica where I grew up, it was fish tea with a lot of pepper because it was said that the heat and the spiciness from the scotch bonnet was supposed to combat that flu and burn it out of your system. Now I make it just for comfort on a rainy day. I don't have to wait until I'm sick to have it. And that's a treat for me. As far as the taste goes, it's definitely fishy it's fishy in a good way and that's your first note followed by just a medley of herbs and spices just all the quintessential Jamaican flavors yellow yam whoa I don't know if I've ever cooked with a yellow yam before that this looks like it would be so hard to cut it just went right through it up until recently I thought this was really common in Jamaica wow this is it's really um, sticky. I posted a poll to Instagram on what do you have when you're sick, chicken soup or fish tea. Many Jamaicans said chicken soup. So I've realized that this was very much something that you have in the rural areas. This is another new vegetable for me, chayote. I've definitely seen them before. How do I cut this? Ugh. Kind of looks like a pear. I just did some research, so apparently this is a younger one, so you can eat it, but the older they get, the skin gets more prickly. I'm gonna leave the skin on. It's gonna live a little. I grew up in Portland. It's close to the ocean, so seafood was extremely accessible. I love one pot meals because I hate doing dishes. And there are less dishes to do when you just throw everything in one pot. Plus, a lot of one pot meals are set it and forget it. You can just leave it there simmering for an hour or however much time it needs to be simmered and come back to a beautiful meal that you can eat straight out of the pot if you want or you just grab a bowl and a spoon or a fork and tuck in. There's no specific pot that you need to make this. You just need a nice big heavy bottom saucepan. It just needs to be big enough to serve the masses or big enough to come back for seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths. And make sure you add lots and lots of scotch bonnet, okay? This is a spicy soup. So I know, I know that Mona said to make it spicy. I heard it, but I'm like, I have a bag. I just like, I'm just a girl, you know, who's not really ready to eat a really spicy soup. I'm just gonna do one. You need to have the pepper there to burn, to sweat the sickness out of your body. Why should people give this a try? Because it's good. <laughs> What else is there to say? I'm gonna add a scotch bonnet pepper. One more. I believe it's one of the unique flavors of the Caribbean. No matter where you are, it always brings you back home. So I would love to share a little bit of Jamaica with the world and fish tea is a great place to start. Try it. <laughs> I had to move this to a smaller bowl because it was too hot. <laughs> Yep, there's the kick. There was that extra scotch bonnet pepper. Mona, I hope you're happy. <laughs> I got it spicy. Yum. I think what I love about this is that this soup is like, when you're eating it, there's a thickness to it. And I think it's definitely from all of those starchy tubers that went into it. It's been a while since I made a recipe with a lot of ingredients that I was totally unfamiliar with, but this one had a bunch. How do you peel this? Oh my God. Come on. What is that? I guess I keep the skin on. It's always really interesting to work with new things because you don't know how they're gonna slice, how they're gonna taste, how they're gonna cook. The chayote, for example, was really surprising, not just because of what it looked like. That looks like a butt. Tell me that's not a butt. <laughs> but also the flavor of it raw was kind of like pear slash cucumbery, 
but I loved the texture of it. It was crunchy. It's just really crunchy. Cooking the whole fish was another new experience for me. I don't know if I've ever really cooked a whole fish before in my house. Uh-oh. Uh, doesn't fully fit. Get, uh, have to cut it. And putting it in the pan with all of the spices and then the water, like, it just worked so well. And I love how that water then became the broth for the rest of the soup. Also, taking the fish apart was so easy. Wow, this is so soft. It just was a great experience, one that I was originally quite intimidated by. The flavor of this really is reminiscent to like a zazzed up chicken noodle soup. The Jamaican fish tea mix has some little noodles in it, so there's like a little bit of that. And the spice powder, there's definitely a fish flavor to it that's really subtle and nice. And I totally see what Mona was saying about this being a sick food. Like, yeah, this would cure you right up, especially if it was even spicier. That would clear out your sinuses in a second. Like, if you're ever intimidated by cooking a whole fish, do it like this because it is easy and delicious and like tender. I love this whole recipe. Something I've never made before, never even heard of it. And it was fabulous. So thanks, Mona. Hi, Beryl. Hi, everyone. My name's Danielle and I live in Brisbane, Australia. I'd like to tell you all about a one pot dish that my mum made for me and my sister growing up called Milo. My mum is from a Portuguese island off the coast of the mainland called Madeira. And one of the dishes that her mum would make for her and her brothers and sisters growing up. Oh my God, more garlic. Is this polenta based stew. I'm halving this recipe. Normally it's a half a cup of garlic. A quarter cup of garlic is a lot of garlic. Good thing I'm not kissing anyone later. <laughs> My mum tells me that it is one of those dishes that was very common for farmers. I'm using the press. This is too much garlic, man, <laughs> for me to keep chopping on my own. Work smart, not hard. I think that that was almost a head. <laughs> this often has potato. There's a Madeira style collard green called corvi. A lot of people will replace corvi if they don't have access to it with kale. Between the garlic and the thyme, this recipe is a lesson in patience. I, like how am I ever gonna get to a quarter cup? Come back in an hour. It is just really heartwarming and one of my favorite dinners that my mom would make growing up. It will often be topped with tuna or sausage. So it's a very versatile dish. My mom grew up as one of 12 and I think that one pot dishes like this were really important for my grandma. They did grow up quite poor, but they always managed to get together these really hearty and nutritious meals. Oh, that smells good. Growing up, me and my cousins would also almost get a new appreciation for these foods. One thing to note is that I'm using instant polenta and that cooks a lot faster than non-instant, so I need to put this in with boiling water, but if you're using non-instant polenta, you'll like boil all of this. Just a FYI. Because we would see them as this almost fancy thing, you know, if I took Milo to school, I was just like, I've got this amazing thing that I can include from my culture and tell people about. One of my favorite ingredients that's included in it is actually the red wine vinegar that you garnish it with at the end. Okay, this reminds me of Mama Liga, but I like that there's stuff in this. Instant polenta is so much better than having this cooked for an hour, I swear. Milo is very warm and homely flavor and adding the red wine vinegar to it just adds this extra zing. It just absolutely makes the dish in my opinion. I think people will like this dish because it's just a different way to be cooking with a base that you can put any toppings that you have available to you. And it just tastes like a Portuguese hug from mum. I think polenta might secretly be one of my favorite foods that I don't necessarily think about on the regular, but every time I make it, I'm like, oh my God, I freaking love polenta. I love this riff on it. 
Oh my god. I freaking love polenta. <laughs> the red vinegar on top is a really interesting flavor combination. It adds a little bit of zing to this. You can really taste the thyme. I mean, I'm not surprised. I spent forever peeling it. It was a quarter cup of thyme. Oh my god. <laughs> How am I still going? How much more time do I need to spend on thyme? I think I could have put more kale into this and that would have been totally fabulous. This really reminds me of this dish, Mama Liga, that I've made on my channel, which is like a breakfast polenta dish that you serve with a fried egg. It's just, instant polenta is so easy to make. It takes like two seconds. And I didn't really ever think about adding other things to it like this, adding the kale and the potatoes, but you could go further than that. You could add any sort of meats or more vegetables into this polenta and it would just be like a totally complete meal. I need to do more with polenta. Seriously. And I'm excited because with the leftovers, you put it in the fridge and then you can fry it. I'm gonna fry it and I'll insert a clip to show you what it looks like. Mmm, so crunchy. Mm. It's like polenta fries. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, this is just like a perfect meal. One pot, less than 10 minutes. Bob's your uncle, you are enjoying a delicious bowl of polenta. I love it. Hi Beryl, my name's Joanna and I'm from Sydney, Australia. My family originates from Crete in um, Hanya, Crete. The one pot meal I'd like to share with you is a Greek dish called spanakorizo, which basically translates to spinach and rice. I'm sure every Greek family have their own little twist as this recipe is commonly made all over Greece. But normally there are two standard ways to make this dish. If there is one tool that has changed my life, it is this chopper. I am obsessed with it, especially like all these shallots. Nah, I'm chopping them. One is with a red base sauce, which is called spanakorizo kokinisto, which means spinach and rice in a red sauce. My family always makes my grandmother's recipe with the red sauce. Done. <laughs> the simple rice dish is a great as a main or served as a side. It's bursting with flavors. It's rich herb infused tomato based sauce the textured rice, a little zing from the lemon juice, and nutrients from the spinach. This dish can also be made vegan friendly by just adding vegetable stock or water instead of chicken stock. We often make this during Lent, Greek Orthodox fast for 40 days over Easter. So the recipe calls for two large packs of spinach. You know that this is gonna cook down to like this little. Also, I was just realizing I've never done a spinach episode, which I feel like would actually be pretty interesting. And we basically turned vegan for 40 days, so we cook it with the water or the vegetarian way over Lent. This is gonna cook down, we know this. That's only one bag, it's full. <laughs> this dish brings back a lot of happy memories of my family all sitting around the dining table at my grandparents' house during a cold winter's night with a table full of a variety of food and my yaya's freshly homemade bread. I have this actually open can of diced tomatoes, so I'm gonna finish this one up. But you could use tomato paste if you didn't have a can of tomatoes. We would eat this dish with her bread, a slice of feta cheese that had been drizzled with olive oil and a sprinkle of oregano, and sometimes with a side of protein. It's an easy, quick, and cheap dish to make that use very little ingredients. The whole family can enjoy it. I would even puree this up for my kids when they were babies. I really believe it is important to keep cultural traditions alive and one way to do this is through food. Spanakorizo reflects the historical agricultural and dietary practices of the Greeks dating back centuries and a symbol of Greek identity representing the rich history and love of food. I love this dish because the flavors remind me of my childhood. My grandfather, grandmother and my mother have all passed away now. Um, so I find comfort in cooking these traditional dishes for my own husband and my children. Thank you for making this special one pot meal and sharing a little piece of grease. I hope you enjoy it and it becomes something you like to share with your family and friends too. Thank you. Yasu. Bye. I will start by saying that making this dish was exceptionally easy for a rice dish. There's this combination flavor of the spinach and the tomato. And then because I put a little bit of salty Greek feta on top, this is delicious. I think it's so crazy how spinach just cooks down to nothing. 
that did cook down so much. That was two full pots and now it's like a quarter of a pot. Oh, spinach, you silly green. When I looked online, I saw a few different images of what this dish could look like. Some of them were more green, some of them were more white, some of them were more red. Mine is kind of like red with speckles of green on it. If you wanted to make this a complete meal, I honestly feel like just like pop in one of those sausages like I had from the Bosnian episode and that would be amazing. I love the texture of the rice in this. It's kind of a little bit wet still, but it's not gloppy at all. I used fire roasted tomatoes that had some jalapeno in it. So there's like a little bit of a kick in this, which I really like. This whole episode of One Pot Meals has been so much fun. I mean, really great cleanup, I'm not gonna lie. But also I feel like I've learned so much about cooking in this one pot, the idea that like so much can happen in one space. It's been life-changing, honestly. I hope that some of these recipes have inspired you. I'm leaving links to all of them in the description. And until next week, here are two more episodes, college meals and lazy day meals that I think are also really fun to make. I will see you all next week. Another thank you to Heyday for sponsoring today's episode. Don't forget to download the game to participate in their community Easter event.